This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Do you want your minis to look just as good as the ones you see on the official Warhammer box art? Yeah, me too. Is what I would say when I started. But after studying all that precisely painted Warhammer, I finally figured out the main method that you can use on any mini so it looks perfect. So what are these methods? Well, it's better if I show you right at the source. When analyzing the style that Games Workshop uses on their box art, you have to ask, what exactly are they trying to achieve? Well, it's clear that the minis have to look good for the box art. But not just that. If you go to some of their articles or if you inspect the rulebook, you can see the minis in all kinds of angles. So it's not like the minis are painted so they look the best just from one angle. And there definitely are techniques for that. That means that pretty much any of their minis look good from the front, profile or the back. Come on man, focus! Aside from looking great from all angles, what do all Warhammer minis have in common? Be it a Space Marine or a Squig. This right here is the most important thing that you can use on any miniature to improve it. To put it simply, all Warhammer box art is readable. That means that everything is defined and clean. You see, Games Workshop doesn't really paint minis to portray art or to make something look realistic, but to sell more minis. And there is nothing wrong with that. But it means that the presentation of the miniature, the plastic, the actual sculpt is more important than the painting. So if you are looking for something more artsy or expressive, the Warhammer box art might not be your cup of tea. But as I said, you can still learn from it. So how do you make your minis more readable? We'll talk about cleanliness later, but let's talk about definition. There are two components to make the overall look more defined. All the edges are highlighted and the recesses darkened. In fact, you can literally use only base coats on your model, define the edges and the recesses and it will look great. And you know what? To prove this to you, I'm gonna fucking do that. Hey you! Did you know that this video is sponsored by Ray Shadow Legends? It's free to play fantasy RPG with millions of players. Oh, so kinda like... Whatever you say, it's better. With over 650 champions, you can build teams for a campaign, dungeons or PvP for glorious melee combat. So they don't have archers? I mean, yeah, they do have archers. Or magicians? Yeah, they do have mages, but that's not the point. If you download the game now, Raid are running a special 12 days of Christmas event for new players. Just copy your player ID and head to 12daysofraid.plarium.com to win some amazing in-game and real-life prizes, including Amazon gift cards worth up to a thousand dollars. Are you sure? That sounds a bit too good to be true. That's the thing, it is true. And if you use my link in the description, you receive bonuses that are in-game equivalent of steroids. That right there doesn't sound fair. Exactly. And if that's not enough for you, if you play for 7 days between now and February 20th, you'll get Randa Rousey as a legendary champion for even more glorious melee combat. Use a special promo code RAID RONDA to get even more bonuses. So you gonna download it? What's that? As I base code this dead corp of Creek Sergeant, there are a few things I want to clarify. First, I used a white primer as a zenithal highlight so all my base codes have a better coverage. You can paint without it, but it might take multiple layers to get fully opaque and clean base coat. And remember, we are aiming for readability, so definition and cleanliness is key here. If you have the impression that the layer is not fully opaque, apply it again until it is. Also, I am using metallics. Yeah, I know, I don't really like metallics myself, because 
they are somewhat limiting. But to be honest, not only is it easier to paint with them, but it's also more likely that it will look great from all angles, which is another important aspect of Warhammer box art. If you are wondering what the hell is the other options to using metallics, it's using non-metallic metal, which is essentially painting something to look metallic without using any metallic paints. Other than that, now it's just a matter of putting the right color at the right spot. I mean, that's kinda the entirety of painting miniatures. But what I mean is using just one color for each part without shading them or stuff like that. After base coating the entire mini, this is what we got. And yeah, it's really fucking boring. But it's clean. Which is not saying a lot, because you could literally take just one color, paint the entire miniature with it, and say that it's clean. However, what it's not is defined, because there is no clear separation of elements. As I said, Games Workshop uses mostly two things to define their miniatures. Recess shading slash blacklining and edge highlighting. So even on the box art you'll see minis with flat base coats that have these two additional components. Believe me when I say that adding these will make all the difference. And remember when I said that we will talk about cleanliness later? Yeah, I will expand on that in a little bit, but as you can see, see, just using fully opaque and clean base coats will do the trick. Now, however, I am adding all that necessary shading. With a very thin brush, I apply straight black paint into recesses. Okay, hold up. Right now, you must be like, Zumikito, why bother doing that when you can apply washes on your miniature? Okay, if you think that it's a good idea to apply acrylic wash over the entire miniature, you either haven't tried it enough times or, or, hear me out, you are smoking crack. <gasps> you can't tell me that Games Workshop painted this by applying a wash over the entire mini. That just cannot work. And I know that because I painted 45 white space marines like that and it took f***ing 6 months! That's because I spent all that time cleaning the wash with my base coat color, which was white! <coughs> Sorry, I got a bit too emotional there. <clears throat> so precision recess shading like this is much, much better. And even though some people call it black lining and you can use black for this, it's absolutely fine to use any color that is darker than your base coat. Hell, you can even use those brown washes, but why not just thin down your regular brown paint? Okay, before we move on, a few more things. One, you absolutely can use washes, but it's better for textured parts, like this one right here, to save yourself time. Two, oil washes are more convenient because they run just into recesses and you can fix them later. And I talk about them in other videos. Three, most likely, even when you blackline your minis, you'll have to fix some of the mistakes later. Like, for example, when you make the blackline too thick. However, it's still faster than fixing the mess after washing the entire mini. And four, do whatever you like. As always, this is just my recommendation, and if you don't like it, don't do it. When you compare these two next to each other, it's pretty obvious that the right one is more defined, because there is more depth. This is why every miniature looks better once you apply a wash over it. But when you do that, you lose that clean finish. Using recess shading, you keep the cleanliness and make the mini more defined. But do you see this part? Yeah, it's too soft for recess shading, so I'll have to apply a few layers over it to shade it. However, let's define our miniature further with edge highlights. When it comes to edge highlighting, Games Workshop actually applies multiple ones. This can be seen on this incubi I painted a while back. I applied like three different paints on most edges. To do that, simply start with a bit thicker highlights that are not as bright, and then paint thinner and brighter highlights inside of the previous one. Not all edges require require multiple rounds of edge highlights and just one round is enough. Keep in mind that miniature painting should be fun and doing three rounds of edge highlights on the entire miniature sounds like the opposite of that. Also, more soft edges like the ones on the fabric can't be too bright because it would look weird. Sometimes I stretch the layer too much, so to fix it, I come back to the base coat and make it thinner. Never think that painting minis is straight linear process. There is a lot of back and forth going on and you can always fix anything that you don't like. Okay, this is pretty good. And we mostly use just base coats, recess shading, 
and edge highlight. And yes, this isn't exactly the same color scheme that you see on the box art, but the point of this exercise is to show you how to get there, not which exact colors to pick. The basic principle is readability, and by applying these methods you can get there. But there is one big disadvantage to this method. I want you to imagine painting something like a Pokemon using this method. Yes, a Pokemon. Just really think about how you would paint a Charizard like that. I'll give you a minute. Okay, now, if you actually gave it a proper thought, you are either like, come on, man, Pokemon are stupid. To which I would reply, no, Pokemon are awesome. Think again, but more importantly, you came to a conclusion that using this method on Charizard is not happening. Let me explain. You see, one thing about most Warhammer minis, and I really have to emphasize most because it's not all of them, is that they are very good for beginners. Most of their minis have a good amount of details, sharp edges and recesses. So by using very simple painting methods, you can get great results. However, if you picked something like a Charizard or other minis that don't have sharp and defined details, GW approach doesn't to work very well. And hell, even softer Warhammer minis like Squeaks or Nurglings, in my opinion, don't look as good painted like that. Okay, so what do we do? If our goal is to have nicely readable minis, we have to find a different way to define them. And because we won't use just one flat base coat, we'll actually have to put in some effort to keep it clean. Let me show you how to do it on this cute miniature of Nurglings. The start is pretty much the same. Just plain old base coats, the deepest shades are filled with black, but then it's all different. I picked slightly lighter green color and covered like 90% of Nurglings skin leaving only the deepest shades. This, however, is far from the last layers. But if you progress like that, you'll define the miniature by painting volumes. Tummy of this little guy is pretty much like a ball or a sphere and therefore I highlight it as such. There are no hard edges, so we are not talking about edge highlights, but volumetric highlights. That's a fancy term that essentially means to paint something to look more 3D-like. As I progress with each layer, I cover less and less with lighter and lighter layer. There is plenty of opportunity to mess up here, but my most important tip is to not make each layer too different, so the transition is not harsh. And the second tip is to make every layer fully opaque so it doesn't look splotchy. Other than that, it's about practice and patience. This isn't the only way to paint volumetric highlights, although I think it's the most straightforward. If you have a feeling that some of the layers are splotchy or too harsh, you can always go back to that layer and fix it. So the definition in this case comes from the fact that you see where is the light and where are the shadows. And cleanliness in this case comes from the smoothness of the gradients. I painted the other Nurgling pretty much the same way, but because I already explained this approach on the green one, the unedited footage for both will be on my Patreon. In the end, I think they came out pretty great. So two different approaches to make your minis readable. By combining them, you get a miniature that is nicely readable, but also not flat. And that's pretty much it. If you like this video, give it a like, and I wanna thank Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video, because it's sponsors like these that make running this channel possible. I encourage you to try it for free using my link in the description. And see you in the next one.